Hi, I'm Daz, and in the second part of the FM Tuners, I'm going to look at the Heath Kit FM4U. Okay, so here's the Heath Kit. Got its own power supply. Looks like minimum parts to change. Well, plus I had a scrapped unit which was in bad cosmetic shape, and I mean bad cosmetic shape, so I have some spare parts. Uh, what I don't have is alignment instructions, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So I thought I might have a go at this one. I'm going to check wound components first because it is a bit rusty. Um, but obviously I've got spares, so if it does turn out that something's open. Um, resistors as well. It's these carbon composite resistors. They're not always reliable. There's an electrolytic that will need changing. And there's a Hunt's capacitor here. That'll need changing. Um, but uh, probably electrolytic, although it's a plezzy made in England. Um, might change that. Put, I think I might have a 50 microfarad dual section. That'll be alright with the rectifier, which is an EZ8, uh, EZ80. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I need to do to get it started. This one seems to be more of a typical domestic set arrangement with EF89s in it and well, that's not a triode is it no it's just an EB91 which is your diodes um, for this though, I'll have to look that up now I'm going to see two filaments so it's only got two diodes in I'm used to seeing the triple ones with the uh, triode in um, Right, let's get on with it. Quite a few of the components are actually out of tolerance while the resistors are, um, should I say more accurately. Um, so I'm going to be replacing a lot of them. Some of them are as high as 40% high. Um, I'm using the snip the uh, end of the resistor off method when I can get to them. And... Uh, Oh, there we go. And then just bending it up out the way. And I find that easier because I've got a resistor to hold on to to remove one end and the other end generally just falls out. So that's the method I'm using. Well, I've had a busy few hours. I'm just cleaning up the pot at the moment just to get a pit part to clean it up. I've replaced these three dropper resistors. The capacitor's been replaced with a dual section and the third section is from this capacitor here. I've changed the fuse because it was one of those old Imperial ones that's got 20mm fuse in now. P-clip I fitted. Um, that's a lot better than uh, whatever was there before. It looked like a bit of tape. Um, so I'm making good progress um, with it. So just looking at the top side that's the dual 50 microfarad which I used in lieu of the 40 Apparently this can take a 50, so that's good. 22 underneath the chassis. Quite a lot of the resistors I've changed. All the 47Ks seem to have drifted quite a lot. I've replaced all the resistors around the ratio detector. Rather than putting an electrolytic in, I found this 10 microfarad polyester and put in. Though I'm curious whether an 8 microfarad would have been better. Um, because most ratio detectors seem to be between 4 and 8 microfarad. Um, I've cleaned all the valve holders and reinserted the valves, cleaned the valve pins. I think I'm just about getting ready to um, be ready to power on now. So uh, hopefully uh, all this work will be rewarded by um, some audio. Um, yep, about uh, four or five hours work I'd say so far. So uh, not, a, not a quick project as I thought. Just removed the front to uh, just give the scale a little clean, oil all the tuning parts and uh, that is the front panel. It's painted behind so I've been very very careful indeed when I removed this, very very careful. So, there we go. Be very careful how tight these screws are up because it's a hole in the perspex, if they're done up too tight you end up with a crack going right down there um, and I've seen them like that, quite a few so uh, but just be careful okay I'm just powering it up um, so 
dim bulb in series. The HT's come right up and is now going down. I think it says this is the second reservoir capacitor after the resistive smoothing. 227. I have an amplifier connected and I can hear nothing. That's a bit of a shame. So no noise, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. <laughs> Back to the drawing board, I guess. Um, HT should be around 210, it's 225, 240 input. Okay, it's never entirely accurate. Um, I wonder what the problem is. Uh, good question. Well, just looking at what's going on here. The EF, it's not focusing very well, is it? But the EF80 does not appear to be glowing. I've checked the filament. See, everything else is glowing nicely, including the. Uh, magic eye but this one I can't see any film activity I, I can see a little bit of orange there but I think it's a reflection of something else of capacitor and it's stone cold so right well that's very interesting going round in circles um, resoldered the valve socket checked the heater again still continuity or appeared to be so I've ended up substituting another EF80 and that is heating up fine I wonder if the filament's got a break in it. But anyway. Anyone? Interesting. So it is alive. Excellent. So we are getting somewhere. Note that the HT is about right now. 212 volts, obviously, without the anode pull off the EF80 um, final IF limiter. Uh, was a little bit on the high side. I'm having a bit of trouble tuning above 102 megs. Um, I had to shift the local oscillator a long way and I can see why. When you tune up to that part of the band you can see that the string is completely slack so that's that needs a bit of resyncing I think and then resetting the local oscillator. <laughs> it's been a case of very carefully adjusting this bit here which has got the string wrapped around it and just tightening the string up because obviously I don't want to go so far that when I tune the other end of the scale it yanks this string right out of the tuner. What's inside the tuner is a ferret core moving inside a coil probably, something like that, with a spring on the end and if I pull the string too tight, snap. But obviously I want it to be um, just tight enough so that it um, tunes the top end of the FM band. Um, so yeah, a little bit of careful. This little lever here hits this bit of metal at the bottom here and that provides a stop at each end of the range. Right, I've got a ratio detector here which is similar to what's in uh, the Heath kit. Now, um, there's several ways to align this thing. One's using a wobbulator and the other way is just using a voltmeter. Now, um, what I've figured out is you put your meter across the 10 microfarad capacitor which charges up um, according to the signal strength and then you adjust the top of the discriminator coil and then adjust the IFs working backwards for a peak. Then you connect to this point here and to ground and you should be able to see a bot uh, you should be able to see a plus and a minus voltage as you adjust the bottom core and you adjust it for zero. The injection point appears to be into the HT connection once it's of course disconnected from the HT and the 10.7 goes in there via a 10 nuff capacitor. Um, I've worked out which one is the local oscillator and the RF by using another FM radio tuned into the local oscillator so I know which wire to remove. I guess it goes into the anode of the RF valve and then you can adjust the um, 
the 10.7 that way. I've been reading up trying to understand how the ratio detector works and I think the breakthrough is I've read uh, Gordon King's book on FM radio service. And it's a very good book actually. I've got a lot of Gordon King books and uh, I, I find them really good. But the idea is that you've got two tuned circuits here and there's a 90 degree shift between the two and I didn't realise that at resonance. And then you've got a, a second coil on the ratio detector here, the pickup coil. Of course that's not tuned so that works differently. I suppose the principle is as the frequency modulation occurs this this tuned circuit here will go in and out of resonance which will cause phase shifts and I understand from what I was reading that uh, the two diodes here will look like variable resistors and that will cause the current going into here to vary um, so that's how it works but it's taken me a long while to figure out how it does work I, I must admit so I'm going to try putting the 10.7 in to the uh, RF HT after disconnecting it from the actual HT supply of course and I'm going to try doing this and see if it actually works for me um, I thought I'd do it with the voltmeter way rather than try and set up my signal generator to be a wobblator again I'm not very good at adjusting for an S curve um, I seem to struggle looking at it on the scope and try and make it even it's not an easy task well I'm all set up here to uh, do the adjustments I've got the old trusty AVO out and uh, I'm just starting with the top of the discriminate coil that's down that's up Oh, yes, it's still going up, and now it's going down again, so yeah, I think I've got the peak there. So just need to work my way back and uh, just adjust it. Uh, this is one thing I didn't want to see. Looks like self-oscillation, and that's not good. Um, that's on the second IF can, so uh, I need to have a think about this. Just looking at the audio output, here we go, as I tune it, ooh yuck. Might have to leave it there, assume it isn't oscillating. Mm, the meter drops back, so there's your uh, FM hiss, so maybe it'll be alright in that position. It doesn't seem to be oscillating. Just trying to set the discriminator now. There's plus and minus, so it wants to say... Oh my goodness. Oh, that is difficult wants to sit on zero. Of course the thing's got to be warmed up. Um, needs to be warmed up quite a bit. Um, good for half an hour before you start fiddling with that. But Yeah, okay. Um, as for the problems with the oscillation, what I did was I uh, adjusted, I adjusted it um, carefully while looking at a demodulated signal with an oscilloscope and got the highest gain I could without it bursting into oscillation. So I hope that's okay. And there we can see a demodulated 75 kilohertz um, deviation tone at one kilohertz. So I don't know, a distortion meter might be better for that. Or I perhaps I should have used a wobble later, but I think I'll give it a try and see see how it sounds. Okay, there you go, a bit of YouTube music. 
just to test it out. I think the case needs some work done and it does look a bit scruffed up, etc. But hey ho, it's working. It was a bit of a fiddle trying to get it aligned, but <coughs> we got there in the finish. Um, a correction on some other videos, uh, well, on the beginning of this video, that's if I don't split it in two, and that is um, I got. Um, I, I had a conversation on ham radio, I was on a ham radio net and I was talking to uh, someone I know who's a bit older than me and he used to own a leak um, trough line, not trowel line, it's trough line, so uh, I got that wrong, <laughs> but there we go. Anyway, so that's the Heath kit, uh, FM4U working, um, it'd be nice if I had some other Heath kit bits to go with it, wouldn't it, but you know, you can't have everything. Anyway. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you didn't find it too boring, and I shall see you soon. Take care.